strategic direction in securing Philippine interests in its eastern seaboard and his reaction to President Duterte's statement that he allowed Chinese ships into Benham Rise. But first, the headlines this morning. Because uh, my, my agreement kami. I invited, I even invited them to the shores of the Philippines for a visit. What I am very sure of is that from the point of view of Secretary Gina Lopez, she repeatedly told us that she gave the respondents every step of the way the opportunity to be heard. Today's big story is no incursion. President Duterte reveals he allowed Chinese ships to enter Benham Rise. That's a Senator Antonio Trillanes calls for a probe into Chinese activities in Philippine territory. And a snowstorm barrels through the U.S. Northeast. President Duterte reveals he allowed Chinese ships to enter Benham Rise, denying any intrusion. But the palace officials were unaware of such an invite from the chief executive. Christian Esguera reports. If the sighting of a Chinese vessel at the Philippine-owned portion of Benham Rice was alarming enough, just as surprising was President Rodrigo Duterte's response. There is no incursion because uh, my, my agreement came. I invited, I even invited them to the shores of the Philippines for a visit. Whatever that agreement was is not clear, but to be sure, government officials who were supposed to know about it were not aware. Yes, sir. Press conference. Press conference, sir. There was a prior coordination down. Ah, hindi ko it certainly raises concerns because in the first place, obviously, uh, DND and DFA did not know about it. Otherwise, they would not have raised this concern. Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana earlier called attention to a Chinese service ship seen lingering in Benham Rise for about three months last year. A large portion of this underwater plateau is located well within the country's 200 nautical mile exclusive economic zone and continental shelf, which means the Philippines has exclusive economic rights to explore and exploit natural resources within this portion, based on a 2012 United Nations ruling. The Philippines also enjoys these same rights over the 150 nautical mile seabed beyond it, or its extended continental shelf. But while the president didn't seem that keen to assert these rights, Malacanang was more categorical. Benham Rice belongs to the Filipino people. The Philippine government is duty-bound to defend and protect our sovereign and territorial right over the, this region. Sa Pilipinas yan, hmm. <laughs> walang, walang duda ro, no? Uh, Inaward natin sa Pilipinas bilang bahagi nga ng ating uh, EEZ and extended continental shelf. The Chinese foreign ministry insists the marine research vessel's presence in Benham Rice was covered by the principle of freedom of navigation and right of innocent passage guaranteed under the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea or UNCLOS. The Philippine government has not acted beyond sending a note to the Chinese embassy seeking clarification on the Chinese ship's presence in Benham Rice. Christian Isguera, ABS-CBN News. China, meanwhile, confirms President Duterte's statement that he allowed Chinese research ships into Benham Rise. The Chinese Foreign Ministry says it is not challenging the Philippines' rights to Benham Rise, but it also asserts the principle of freedom of navigation. Just as what President Duterte has said, China and the Philippines have communicated on the issue, exchanged ideas, clarified facts, and handled it properly. I'm willing to reiterate that China fully respects the Philippines' rights to the continental shelf of Benham Rise. There is no such thing as to challenging its right. But as a fundamental principle of the international law, one's exclusive economic zone or continental shelf does not belong to its territory. While a coastal nation exercises its rights on a continental shelf, others' rights enjoyed under international law, including freedom of navigation, should not be harmed. 
Now, Senator Antonio Trillanes wants a probe into what is happening in Benham Rise. Trillanes, the principal author of the archipelagic baselines law, says he wants to find out what the Defense Department is doing regarding the issue. A vocal critic of President Duterte, Trillanes once again took a swipe at the chief executive, saying his strategy toward China is not working. It's quite ironic that uh, Duterte early on uh, accused me and uh, President Aquino for uh, selling out the Philippine territory. But when the arbitration ruling came out in our favor, that basically negated or mooted all these uh, baseless claims. Mm -hmm. And now we need to to pounce on that uh, that possibility that he, he indeed sold out our uh, sovereign interests. And joining us on Hot Copy this morning, we have Muntinlupa Representative Rufi Biazon. He's filing a resolution to inquire about the government's direction in securing the country's interests, particularly Benham Rice. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Congressman morning, Biazon. Karen. Thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting me. All right, you filed resolution House number 884, yes. which actually, in a way, questions not just the incursion of Chinese ships into Benham Rice. You haven't tackled here yet the president supposedly allowing them to actually enter Benham Rise? Well, if the hearing would be conducted, uh, of course, that would be made part of the inquiry. Um, if indeed there was permission from uh, the president uh, for the Chinese to go into the waters of Benham Rise. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Um, when, when I filed the resolution yesterday, what we were uh, uh, basing it on were the statements of uh, Secretary Lorenzana of the that Department he, of yeah. Defense. Uh -oh that he kind of put, uh, put out a question on the presence of the, the Chinese. Yeah. And uh, actually the intention of this resolution goes further than just asking what the incursion was about. Yeah. Uh, we also would like to see what is the strategic direction of the Philippine government with regard to Benham Rice. All right, Congressman, can the president unilaterally give permission to China Yes, you can enter Benham Rise. Well, l let's look at what is the stated uh, scenario now. No? Um, China is telling that they, is saying that um, they are on a freedom of, uh, of uh, passage yeah. going through mm -hmm. that Benham Rise. That it was Rice. an innocent. In, uh, yes, yeah. uh, claiming to the right of innocent passage. Yeah. Uh, and the president said that he allowed. Um, well. Just based on those two statements, uh, we, we don't see any, any, anything wrong yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because under UNCLOS, there, there really is uh, mm -hmm. the right to uh, innocent passage. Mm -hmm. And um, permission is not really required. Okay. okay, but how would one define innocent passage? In your House Resolution 884, you said here that it was reported the vessels were moving in a crisscrossing pattern. If it is crisscrossing, is that innocent passage? Well, under UNCLOS, uh, innocent passage would mean uh, literally just, you're just passing by. Uh -oh. um, but they were there for from, a month. Going from one point to another okay. in a straight line. Uh -oh. or basically in a straight line. Uh, but w based on what uh, Secretary Lorenzana said, the vessels were observed to be doing crisscrossing patterns in, in the manner that is consistent uh, with uh, surveying. Mm -hmm. So that's, why, that's what uh, Secretary Lorenzana said. Okay. Of course, uh, when we called for this inquiry, it, Secretary Lorenzana would have to explain what uh, the information he got was and how he got it. Yeah. So that's where we can see if it really was innocent mm -hmm. passage or uh, it, it was... Uh, um, uh, doing something that yeah. is, is not but within what is allowed. Can the Philippines claim Benham Rice completely as its own, given the fact that uh, coming from the decision, it turns out that the Philippines was not awarded the entire Benham Rice. The award was only 150 nautical miles further than or 200 mile exclusive economic zone as per own close. Yes, In other words, there's a part of Benham Rice that was not awarded to us. It, it was the, uh, the decision was to confirm that it is part of our extended continental shelf. Okay. 
Um, so that, that means that UNCLOS recognizes that we, that, that we have rights over uh, the marine resources there. Mm -mm. So that's, that's our claim. Um, of course, there are, there are, there are uh, particulars with regard to uh, how far from uh, our baseline uh, we can claim. But what, what the fact remains that UNCLOS has recognized Benham rice yeah. as part of our extended uh -oh. continental shelf. Okay, now, can the president, let, let's move to this, mm. can the president allow another country to, to survey or traverse or mm. pass through Benham rice? Can he do that? Well, he, he does not even have to uh, give permission if it is really innocent passage. If it is. Yes. But why give permission if it's innocent passage? Well, th these, are, uh, th these are statements that have uh, just been given uh, yesterday. Yeah. So that's why we, there is really a need for us to look into uh, this issue further. But what are the implications that you have Defense Secretary Lorenzana not even knowing? When the president said he allowed them, he said, Sinabi ba Something to that effect. What are the implications of the DFA not knowing, the defense not knowing, cabinet members not knowing, Congress not knowing? Well, of course, uh, whenever you deal with uh, other countries, um, it's important that you show unity okay. as an administration. Yeah. Uh, there must be one voice. And obviously, in this case, what uh, our uh, counterparts are seeing is that um, the members of the cabinet are, are not in tune with uh, what the president yeah. has done. But do you think the president is downplaying this? I, I, I can't assume that because uh, mm -mm. if indeed there was communication between the president and China uh, with regard to this innocent passage, yeah. claim, claim of innocent passage, then... Uh, it might not have been uh, an information that the president passed on. Uh, I, I, it just reflects that uh, th th there is something uh, that needs to be ironed out within the administration. Mm -hmm. In terms with, of, in terms in terms of, of sharing information yeah. and uh, with regard to policy, especially if it's uh, foreign policy. Okay. Now, the defense of, of the Chinese government is the innocent passage, because, of course, international waters um, are free for everyone to pass through, right? It's freedom of navigation. Mm -hmm. But they were there for three months. Would well, that be considered an aggressive act at this point? If, if I may just give out my personal opinion. Sure. You know, um, China has a track record of doing something, uh, saying something that is contrary to what they're doing. Uh, uh, take a look at the West Philippine Sea. Uh, so, uh, pardon me, but I, I, I won't take it hook, line, and sinker that they were going, going on innocent passage there. Yeah, yeah. What can we do as a country after seeing what's happened in the West Philippine Sea? Imagine but, the last administration <clears throat> took them to the International Tribunal. The decision was in favor of the Philippines. And yet, building reclaimed areas did not stop. You're now talking about reefs that have turned into islands. Three mm -hmm. islands are within our exclusive economic zone. Some of them are already... They're so built to the point that you can actually put missiles, guns... Yeah. It, it's too late. It's for designed us. as a forward base. Okay. You know the the the, uh, the necessity of them putting up those facilities in West Philippine Sea is to project their naval power mm -hmm. outwards to the Pacific, and um, you know Benham Rise, uh, the, the shallowest part is 50 meters. Okay. Un unlike in the West Philippine uh -oh. Sea, there were uh, coral reefs and atolls mm -mm, mm -mm. to build structures on. Mm -mm. Um, I, I would tend to believe what uh, Secretary Lorenzana said, uh, that they could have been surveying uh, for the possible deployment of submarines in no. that part of the ocean. Okay. Because that is projection of naval, military, naval power. Uh -oh. If you have uh, Chinese submarines patrolling our eastern seaboard, then they've already extended their, their reach. Okay. Now, uh, if we can show the viewers again, okay, part of Benham Rise, I think you're an expert in this because no, you, really. but you sit in the in the defense. I just committee have in the access house. to information. Yes, can you can they actually build? We're looking at it now. In Benham Rice, can they actually build 
another facility there? Can they reclaim reefs? No. Well, you cannot? The, the, as I said, the shallowest part is about 50 meters. Uh -oh. That's more than 100 feet. Uh -oh. uh, so it's too shallow. It's, it's too, too shallow. Uh, it's too shallow. It's too deep. Yeah, it's okay. too deep for them to build structures like what we saw in uh, West Philippine Sea. Okay. But they, they can deploy their submarines to patrol in that area. And that's already extended reach for them. Okay. If there's submarine patrols within those waters, they're not using natural resources. They're not... Um, E extracting any mm -hmm. resources from Benham Rice, would that be considered, in a way, its freedom of navigation? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, isn't that a tricky part there? Well, freedom of navigation uh, excludes military activity. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, a so submarine, if, right? A, well, a uh, submarine is only uh, an equipment of the military. Okay. Uh, so definitely. But then, how can you determine that yeah. there's a submarine down there? So, Congressman, where does this put the Philippines? You know, the, moving forward, the Philippines yeah. should now take a look at developing a, a strategic security plan for Benham Rice in the next five to ten years. Because the Chinese themselves have their own uh, timeline yeah. Yeah, yeah. For, their, for their plan of uh, um, enforcing their power in, yeah. in the Pacific. But when you hear President Duterte say, for example, in that press conference, he said, did you see how, uh, I mean, how China... Uh, has, in, in a way, no, I'm rephrasing, but mm. he, in a way he's in awe of, of uh, Chinese military hardware to the point of saying he refuses to compete with them. Well, or it, it's really far-fetched for us to even dream of competing with China yeah, uh, yeah. militarily. Oh, so yeah. what's the strategy for us? Well, another option there is uh, something that we've always had in, in, our, in, in our hands, uh, an ally. We have allies if in other countries which could provide the balance of power. The United States has always been there. Let's say that we have our different, different opinions about the United States. But this is a battle between two powers. And uh, we have the opportunity to use the United States against the threat of China. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the difference between the two is that China is a th has a threat of... Um, uh, of, of uh, getting territory from us. Yeah. They've now, already done it. Yeah. After what China has done, do you think there's anything that's stopping the U.S. Pacific Fleet from doing the same? Or based on past actions, you of course don't they think would, they, they will? They would also be careful. Okay. Uh, because nobody wants a shooting war in, in the Pacific. Mm -hmm. um, remember, we have uh, other allies in the area. We also yeah. have Japan. Uh -oh. Japan is even sending its own ship into yeah. uh, the uh -oh. South China Sea. So we can use that. In it, since we really cannot match China uh, tit for tat militarily, we, we can make use of allies. Mm. We have current agreements with yeah. these allies. But what can the allies do for the Philippines? This is the time of a sophisticated diplomacy. How yes. can we assert our sovereignty you know, we in should, that area? Definitely we should use diplomacy, but it should okay. not be passive diplomacy. When I say passive diplomacy, it's, it's just all talk. Are we passive diplomacy now? Uh, well, I would say so. Uh, um, we should invest more. For example, going back to that uh, strategy of defense for the Benham Rice. Um, first, we should what are specific examples. We can invest more on our national coast, coast watch system. Yeah. Because our national coast watch system now basically just covers West Philippine Sea. Yeah. So it's about time that we invest and put um, uh, um, receivers and uh, surveillance equipment on our eastern seaboard. Yeah. Uh, because we don't have to match them militarily. I, I mean, the, we should just basically develop the capability to sur the monitor the area, uh, conduct patrols, or even interceptions if needed. Uh, Secretary Lorenzana ordered the Navy to intercept any vessel that is going to come in yeah. the Benham Rise. But right now, what we, he would have to do is pull out some assets from other areas to bring it to Ben yeah. and Rice. But so we should be looking yeah. at investing in the defense of what was already mm. granted to us. And I was going to say, Congressman, don't we have to accept the fact that perhaps even the information that Secretary Lorenzana got mm. may have come from the U.S.? It's very possible because we share information, intelligence information, with our allies. And they are our ally allies. Yeah. Are you, do you feel secure with where President Duterte is going 
in how he's dealing with China. Senator Antonio Trelliano said on early edition, it's not working. Well, per, uh, right now, um, we are not aware. Congress, how does, the House of Representatives is yeah. not aware of what the strategic plan is with regard to Benham Rice. Uh -oh. So they might just not be telling us everything. So we would feel more secure if we were also informed. Yeah. Um, besides, it, it would be the House of Representatives, Congress, which, which would be initiating appropriations for whatever mm -hmm. activity will be done to secure Benham Rice. What's quite interesting is even in your House of Resolution, um, you've included the fact that uh, the Department of Foreign Affairs sent a letter to the Chinese yes. Embassy seeking a clarification yes. right, on the Chinese passage, to the Chinese vessels passing through Benham Rice. Have they actually given a clarification? Well, I haven't heard yet uh -oh, if, they've read, if, they've read, if they've responded. Um, definitely, they should respond. Yeah. To, to at least explain what the, the innocent passage was. Mm -mm. What was the vessel doing there? Where was it going? Things like that. They, okay. should, they, should, they should reply to that. And also the fact that Secretary Lorenzana had said that it was very concerning <laughs> and said he had ordered the Navy to accost and drive away the service ship from Ben Amrise if it is seen again. Yes, th those are very clear words from the Defense Secretary. So. Uh -oh. But how can I they think, actually I think drive them away? There are still some people there who are mm -hmm. doing the right thing. Uh -oh. What can lawmakers do? Honestly speaking, like you investigate this in Congress, what can you do? Um, like, for example, the, the example that I gave, um, it requires funding. So Congress should now uh, help in funding any security plan that will be put into place in the eastern seaboard. Mm -hmm. Another example is putting up facilities such as airfields or seaports. Mm -hmm. um, because on that side, we, are, mm -hmm. we, we don't have um, ideal uh, facilities uh, which could accommodate, um, uh, if, for example, if we, if we allow allies to help with the... Uh, uh, securing the area. We don't have facilities such as we, what we have in Subic, in, uh, in Sangli Point. Uh, so something like that on, on the eastern seaboard would help. Mm -hmm. uh, um, again, going back to the National Coast Watch system, uh, we can expand it. Uh, and, and all of these need funding. Yeah. In the last, um, I, I know in the, in, in the last budget, uh, General uh, Appropriations Act, there was already an increase in the funding for the Navy. Yes. But, That's correct, no? Yes. But you feel it is not enough? Uh, I, I, I just think that we should um, specifically target uh, securing Benham Rice. Uh -oh. uh, because the, requ the request of the AFP, uh, the DND, uh, for the budget is basically for the entire Philippines. Okay. But at that time, um, I, I just felt that uh, we have not given sufficient focus on that part of the country. Uh -oh. We've always been focused on uh, the West Philippine Sea. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, the West Philippine Sea and Benham Rice have been with us for centuries, and yet you may have other countries saying, well, frankly, the Philippines never used its natural resources. The Philippines never knew how to extract right from Spratlys or any other part of the exclusive economic zone do you feel that we are also wanting and lacking in how we've actually used our EEZ well I compare it to, uh, to, to no, on a smaller scale I compare it to when you have a piece of property yeah if you don't use it somebody will come in and squat on it exactly there you <laughs> that's, go that's, that's, the that's basic what happened thing yeah oh, so what even the right of the, the even the right of innocent passage uh, I've seen it happen in my district in properties uh oh at first, they'll start just passing through, walking uh -oh. through the property, and then eventually, when you need to use the property, May it, 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 it somehow becomes their right. Para nagagalit sila pag pipigilan mo silang dumaan. Uh -oh. That's so, the situation yeah, now. That, that's what we should avoid. Uh -oh. uh. So, ito naman, uh, looking forward, no? Is it, would it be good strategy if within the EEZ, we also start using it? In yes. other words, the thing is, we are uh, right now, the relationship between the Philippines and China is very good. Mm. But we've also succumbed to not acting on what is yes, ours. Yes, we should have presence there. Yeah, uh, other than uh, presence, we don't actually survey for oil. 
Well, at first, we don't uh, do that. the Benham Rice was, uh, our rights to, to Benham Rice was confirmed only last 2012. Okay. And then by 2014, we were already do, doing exploratory research there. Uh, in fact, the video, they've shown videos of divers going there. And I personally know one diver who's, who's gone there, yeah. who was part of the team. So we're starting to do that. Uh, probably we just have to accelerate. You know, one, one simple idea I, I even thought of, uh, I saw this in, in the United States. Um, they put a marker uh, on, on the ocean painted with the American flag. Why wow. don't we do that? Yeah. Oh, the the shallowest we, part of uh -oh. Benham Rice is just 50 meters. That's about 150 feet. You can put a cable, submarine, uh, an underwater cable there to, to tie in the buoy painted with the Philippine flag. There you yeah. go. That's Philippines. No, are you formally <laughs> suggesting this right now? Because that's uh, a I, very I, strong... It's an idea that I just threw out in, into the open. Because yeah. the U.S. has done it. I've, I've just seen it. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it's just, uh, uh, what they did was just a marker to commemorate the Star Spangled Banner, um, the national anthem. Yeah. But I was thinking of, why, why, why don't we do it in, in Benham Rice? It's pretty much like when man landed on the moon, they put the U.S. flag there. So yeah. oh, we, are, we are now into new territory or uh -oh. we're called new You don't new consider grounds. that an aggressive act? China might perceive it that way? Well, uh, to me, we, we have rights to uh, explore and exploit that area. It's a buoy, <laughs> just painted with the Philippine flag. It's a buoy. Yeah, it's just yeah, a buoy. Yeah. It's a marker so, to guide the ships which are going there. If there is a ship that's passing through on Innocent Passage, Oh, that, that's uh, that's Benham Rice. There's a marker. Okay, <laughs> you can treat it that way. Yeah. All right. I don't think see it as an aggressive uh, act. Okay. <laughs> All right. So when will the hearing start? Well, I just filed the resolution yesterday. Um, unfortunately, we're going on break this week. Okay. Uh, we'll be resuming sessions uh, first week of May, mm -mm. and hopefully, it gets referred to um, the committee, and uh, it will be given priority. Okay. On that note, I want to thank you so much for thank coming, you. Congressman Rufi Biazon. We're going to take a quick break. Head start. We'll be right back.